What's up, my friends? Here we are, Berkeley, California. Another chilly morning, chilly winter morning, and we're approaching spring quickly. We just had a nice rainstorm, and hopefully not the last one for the season. Uh, but today I want to show you a tree that I'm not particularly fond of the species as whole I've had some uh, experiences with them um, where um, large limbs just fall without any warning or many signs so uh, I've been always a little skeptical of these trees of the species this is a Chinese elm they also also called as Chinese evergreen elm or an evergreen elm there's some cultivars available in the nursery trade but this tree in particular uh, I'm not speaking of the species I'm speaking of this specimen now um, it's a beautiful tree it's got a canopy spread of about 60 feet and uh, it's about, uh, let's see, uh, that's 40, maybe another 50 feet tall. It's large. It's a large tree, okay? And um, it's just a gorgeous tree that's been well maintained. As you can, as you can see, there's no signs of um, failures. And there's always uh, the possibility of failures but um, what uh, what's being done correctly with this tree and that's what one thing I wanna I wanna uh, show and share with you guys is the fact that um, you can grow a really good tree and take care of it without compromising uh, its beauty okay and uh, you can uh, a large tree can really be safe uh, just with the right maintenance uh, there's a lot of pruning cuts in there but they're all small pruning cuts I see no pruning cut larger than three inches maybe there's a few that are a little about three inches now what one of the things that uh, influences uh, poor uh, poor cuts and large cuts is their proximity to the power lines okay and that tree has no power lines uh, above it or next to it there's some across the street here but they're far away enough where uh, nobody has to come and make big cuts okay so we'll step a little closer and I'll show you a couple of features of this tree again it's an evergreen Chinese elm but uh, here in Berkeley you know it doesn't really stay evergreen as you can see in these branches here the, the kind of piece a little sparse uh, but the lower canopy has been it hasn't the lower canopy has had leaves um, non-stop throughout the winter so I guess that's why it's called evergreen Chinese elm. Um, and let's look at the leaf really quick. They're small leaves, about an inch to an inch and a half. They're entire leaves, and they have some scalloped margins. I guess you could call this tooth dentate. They're glossy, they're soft. The underside, I have to make sure you can see that well. Um, they're oblong leaves and uh, they're arranged alternately. Their branching pattern usually shows you the the leaf pattern, the phyllotaxy, how the leaves are arranged. 
and that's a perfect example that little branchlet there they're alternate okay the new growth has red color petioles and twigs most of them so that's a nice coloration the family is old macy old macy and uh, one of the very distinctive features of these trees is the peeling bark and it makes these patterns these irregular patterns um, here i plucked a piece it's got it has this um i guess they would be lentils that peel off anyway it's uh, quite quite a gorgeous looking tree it's got like a camouflage of browns and greens and different shades of browns and greens and grays all scattered through the through the trunk and branches um, up to a certain size and this is a gorgeous specimen okay we it's got a really good growing space you can see the root flare right there on all sides. I don't want to step into the neighbor's garden, but those root flares, those are super important that they're visible and you can see them. Now here, about five feet up, the tree splits into two trunks. Um, and that could be of concern but they, it has a good U shape. It's not a V shape. So the, the bark in here, let's not step on the plants. The bark that farther down in the trunk at some point was probably included, but now it has uh, grafted and, and it has a nice U shape. That helps the tree stay together and not uh, pry itself apart with uh, with years of growth pushing against each other so there's probably a little included bark in there but it's not of concern and uh, yeah once again this this is just a gorgeous specimen that I wanted to share with you and I've been looking at this tree for about five years now and it's nothing to the tree. Five years is nothing. This tree's probably been here like 50 or 60 years at least. They, they are fast growers, but not that fast. And uh, they, they come from China, of course, um, from, uh, you know, the Asian region. Um, I can't tell you exactly where in China they're native from. It's a large country, but uh, yeah, it's uh, any tree in our landscape uh, provides habitat for birds, squirrels, insects. Okay, they have their own um, micro climate within the tree. Okay, so uh, fungus and pathogens also live in there and. Um, the, these trees are susceptible to Dutch elm disease so um, that's always a little concern um, and Texas root rot um, so here in California we don't necessarily have to worry too much about Texas root rot but uh, again um, the cultural conditions um, look pretty good uh, and what do I mean by cultural conditions is the the area where it's located, right? Um, there's some plants around. It looks like there's drip irrigation, um, giving the tree a little extra moisture. Uh, but they're very drought tolerant. They'll tolerate, uh, you know, long spells without water. And and they're they're good trees. Um, as long as you have the space to grow them 
and you train them as they grow and again I'm talking about training in the urban environment okay if you have a, a giant area where you don't have to worry about targets then it's fine you can just let a tree do its thing and it'll fall apart by itself uh, maybe not but it's likely to have failures here and there but again um, this tree is so valuable not only to the person who who owns it because um, trees are considered physical property but it's valuable to the whole neighborhood and valuable to to the community because there's nesting birds there's insects there's there's a lot going on uh, that we cannot see with our bare eyes but anyway um, I was on a roll making a lot of videos and then I took about a week off and uh, my son said hey I subscribed to your channel and you were making a lot of videos and now you stopped and I said ah, yeah you're right I'm gonna make another one but I, I just have to find the tree and be inspired to do the video take a couple minutes out of my day anyway one more time Chinese evergreen elm um, Ulmus parvifolia and it's in the old Macy family the elm family and it's a nice tree all right guys plant more trees take care see you in a future video peace